Dr. Mobley here. We're two days post-operative from an upper eyelid surgery. We made a small incision in the crease here. There's some stitches out here. The cheeks look a little beat up, but totally normal for this kind of operation. There was some cosmetic fat injected along the cheeks, and this kind of brown color is from the chemical peel. Like a lot of plastic surgery, it always looks a little unusual if you're not used to seeing it, but for two days after surgery, that's actually a very normal appearance. Um, looks a little brown here, a little pink here, a little red here. The main thing to do after an eyelid surgery is you just want to keep the incisions clean here. And these little stitches out here, they're all, almost always blue. Sometimes we'll put dissolvables there. Those you want to keep clean. And just like so many things in the face, we just this Q-tip's just been dipped in some hydrogen peroxide. And I'm just going to kind of lightly rub along the stitches. This particular patient's obviously been doing great stitches care at home because it has been two days and there's almost no old dry blood there. So this person gets an A+. Plus. This is just a dry Q-tip. I'm just sort of, for lack of a better verb, just kind of mopping up any of the excess hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is great for cleaning skin, but you don't want to leave it on the skin. It's a little bit harsh. And so then after you're done, will typically give you a small prescription of eye antibiotic ointments, a little bit better to use for the eye. It comes in a small tube, I call it the Tootsie Roll size tube, it's about the size of an old Tootsie Roll candy. But you just want to take a little bit of that ointment and just kind of lightly coat those stitches. And again, it's the prescription ointment that comes in a little tube and just put a thin layer. If you do that three or four times a day, that's going to heal very nicely. Next thing we'll just talk about quickly here is down here, this is again is where there's been some cosmetic fat placed under the skin as well as the chemical peel. There you want to just use Aquaphor. Aquaphor, pretty commonly available over the counter. Sometimes we'll give you this stuff called Laser Balm. They both work pretty well. Do not, this is important, do not use the prescription ointment on your skin, it can cause a contact dermatitis, you'll get really red. So just take a pretty good liberal amount of the Aquaphor and just rub it all over that skin that's kind of pink and brown. And just like a sunburn, let's say that getting a chemical peel is like getting a sunburn. If this person's surgery was two days ago, just like if you'd gone to the beach two days ago and got a sunburn, your skin doesn't peel right after the sunburn, it peels about five to seven days later. So you just keep the skin moist and then know that about five or so, seven days after the peel, some of this brown and red skin begins to kind of flake off. And then you don't really want to peel it too much, but there's, if there's an obvious dry piece, you can kind of remove it. But the best thing is just keep it soothed with ointment. And again, remember to use the Aquaphor for the peeled skin and use that small tube of prescription ointment for the stitches there in the crease.